The diversity of the Nintendo Switch library continues to grow with popular city building simulator Cities Skyline joining its ranks. This Switch version includes expansion packs After Dark and Snowfall as part of the deal, but does this city builder have us living on a prayer or on the highway to hell? Let's find out! In terms of graphics, the various terrain types, weather conditions and night and day cycles all play their part in making City Skyline a very aesthetically pleasing game. Zooming in brings a nice level of detail whether you are just touring the streets, taking in the city nightlife with its neon signs or watching a busy day at work unfold. It really helps to bring what the statistics and the figures tell you to life. Watch as a household with a sickness bug are visited by an ambulance as the police fly down the road blues and twos on full, or as the fire brigade come to the rescue. The ambient glow of the lampposts as they turn on for the evening is another nice touch. Zooming out gives a good view of your creation, whether it's lit up like a Christmas tree during the evening, or full of the hustle and bustle of everyday life. In terms of performance, for the most part, City's skyline runs very well. As your city grows, you will begin to notice some stuttering when zooming in and out of your city or when spinning the camera, but in the grand scheme of things, this is inconsequential to the gameplay and the sheer fact that this runs as well as it does on the Switch is very impressive. Graphics get 16 out of 20. The music starts out fairly unintrusive, but builds as you play. In all honesty, it gets a little overbearing at times. The music itself isn't bad at all, In fact, it reminds me of something that you would have heard in a 90s Disney live action movie, but for my tastes, it would have been better suited adding some subtlety to the ambience as you play, rather than jostling for centre stage by becoming quite loud and bombastic. You can turn music and sound effects down separately though should you wish, and audio receives 14 out of 20. When you first start the game, you have the option to choose from a number of different terrains, each with their own levels of natural resources. These range from wide open forest areas, to more island based lands, and even include areas covered in snow and ice. You start with a tutorial which shows you the basics, and there is even an unlimited money mode if you just want to enjoy the game without the pressures of turning a profit and keeping your city afloat financially. Once you have laid a basic road structure, you will need to start laying zones, which will build up as your city grows. The three zones are residential, commercial and industrial, and these will allow you to house your citizens, as well as giving them places to shop and work respectively. City management starts to come in when considering whether placing residential areas next to noisy industrial areas is a good idea for example, or where to place landfill sites so as not to upset your residents. The next step is to ensure that all buildings have access to clean water and electricity and again, building your water pumps near your sewage plant would be a big mistake. As your city grows and your population hits certain milestones, you will unlock new features, services and buildings, including some unique buildings. The sheer amount of different services, roads and buildings that begin to become available to you is quite mind boggling and really shows the true scope of the game. Once you have the basis of a successful city, you can then start to consider how much to charge in taxes or how much funding to plough into education or emergency services and this is where the management side of the game really takes hold. Building your city is one thing, maintaining and growing it is something entirely different. You can look at the economic state of your city through profit and loss spreadsheets, take out loans and even invoke policies such as fitting a smoke detector in every home, drastically reducing the risk of fire but increasing the upkeep of every house you've built. Do you then reduce the fire department's budget to compensate? Well that's up to you. Buildings begin to upgrade around your city as you increase the land value around them. Parks, plazas and having good services in place all help with this. It may have been useful had the game included an advisor character, just someone to steer you in the right direction should your city start to fall into chaos or to remind you of certain duties you may have neglected due to such a wealth of options. This could have been completely optional, but some, including myself, may have just found this a little helpful. There is a feature called Advisor, accessed by clicking the right stick over a building or feature, and this will give you more information about that particular feature, but this is not quite the same. The game does include the Twitter parody, Chirper, 
which allows you to get a feel for what your citizens are thinking and feeling and this does fulfill the role of an advisor to a degree. It also crops up with the occasional pop culture reference too. There are no challenge or scenario modes to take on and there are also no natural disasters as you would find in SimCity, but the core gameplay is so much fun whilst also being very challenging and in-depth that these are not huge issues. Gameplay receives 18 out of 20. I'm sure that one of the more burning questions that most people would have in regards to this port of City Skyline is how does a game made for a mouse and keyboard control on the Nintendo Switch? Well the answer is surprisingly well actually. You use the D-pad to scroll along the various buildings, areas or monuments available to you and select the one you want with the A button. All of your graphs and spreadsheets are accessible via the Y button. Holding this down brings up a radial menu where you can then view financial information, statistics and data on the current growth and status of your city. These two schemes are both very intuitive and mean that pretty much everything you need is readily available and easy to find. As already mentioned, clicking in the right analog stick will bring up the advisor mode, giving information about whatever building or facility you currently have highlighted and holding down the left stick will speed up time within the game, whilst clicking it down will pause time should you need to. In terms of navigating the screen, you use the left stick to move around. This works well for the most part, and when it comes to more intricate matters such as laying roads, water pipes or power lines, you can zoom in and out using the ZL and ZR buttons. You can move the camera by using the right stick, and there is also the option to operate the camera freely by pressing the minus button allowing you to see your burgeoning city as it continues to grow. It's a testament to the developers that a game that is so obviously made for use with a mouse never feels too fiddly on a console, and controls receive 16 out of 20. City Skyline costs £35.99 or $39.99, so it's obviously a higher priced game on the Nintendo eShop. I do wish that any game that fell into this price bracket got a physical release, allowing physical collectors who would bulk at paying such a high price for a digital game the opportunity to add such games to their collection. However, this is just a personal wish and not a knock against the game's quality in any way. This is a full fat version of a simulation game and it's wonderful that the Switch, essentially a handheld device, is now getting these types of games. Hundreds of hours of playtime await you if you are willing to invest some initial time learning the ropes and don't forget that two expansion packs are also included and value gets 17 out of 20. To conclude, Cities Skyline is a fantastic addition to the Nintendo Switch library and one that, along with the announced Civilization VI, should have Switch owners excited. Even if this is not your sort of game, its arrival on the Switch opens doors for a wealth of different genres to join it and if you are a fan, then, well, what are you waiting for? Pick this one up straight away. Cities Skyline Nintendo Switch Edition gets a Switch Up score of 81%. Thank you very much for watching. I'm absolutely full of cold at the minute, so apologies if a few sniffs escape me when I'm editing this video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't, all that good stuff. And, as always, happy gaming. Build anywhere, play everywhere. Cities Skylines. Out now.